Their target is a military rail yard near the city of Rouen in Nazi-occupied France. The attack group consists of only 12 bombers. And because the 8th doesn't have their own fighter plane yet, a handful of RAF Spitfire planes will ride along to protect them. I think we caught the Germans by surprise. I look out the cockpit window, waiting to see some sign of enemy fighters. But we're still in the clear. Over the objections of his officers, General Ira Aker insists on joining them in one of the bombers. He follows behind Tibbetts' plane as they approach the target. All combat crewmen take up their stations. We're alert and vigilant. Then, Tibbetts banks right, leading the formation on our bombing approach. We're all astonished. There's still no fighters or flak. My theory that day bombardment is feasible is about to be tested. I see the target ahead. Long lines of railroad track crowded with freight cars. I give the order to open the bay doors, then switch control of butcher's shop to the bombardier up in the plexiglass nose. It's his plane now. I hear the call over the intercom. Bombs away. All 12 planes drop their bombs. 37,000 pounds in total. Paul Tibbetts becomes the first B-17 pilot to attack German-held territory from the air. From the back of the formation, General Aker keeps close tabs on the group's progress. Mushroom clouds of smoke drift up toward the sky, one from within the central target and a few others around the lengths of track. This is better than we could have asked for on our first combat mission, our first direct attack on Hitler. We caught them off guard. Now, time to get out of here. Holy mackerel. Now comes the flak, leaving stains of smoke in his wake. It's erratic at first, but then zeroes in on us. I spot high enemy fighters. three German ME-190s coming in for the attack. Watch those two at 12, they're coming in. Same thing at 3 o'clock. I see him. Low, he's going low. 11 o'clock low. Watch it, Paul. They come zooming out of the earth and open fire on our fortresses. Their fighters let their tracers loose on our formation, but our gunners let loose on them. He's coming in on the air roll. Pull her up, pull her up, pull her up. Shoot, shoot, he's right there. 11 o'clock, straight Watch off. Fighter. At 3 o'clock, they're coming in. I think I hit one. Suddenly, we got new gunfire erupting above and below. The Spits are on their back. Our escorts, British Spitfire fighters, are engaging the Germans, giving us cover. A group of 35 to 40 German planes keep their distance, watching. It seems like they're simply looking over us. We head back across the channel. All clear. And the tension is almost gone. As all 12 bombers return safely back to base, U.S. military officials and press crowd the tarmac to hear how it went. General Aker, commanding the Bomber Command, led this flight, and he may like to say a few words. I saw a uh... Some FW-190s attacked some of our ships. I could see the, their gunfire, and I could also see the reply of our turret gunners. Our people held formation excellent, excellently. I don't think you need to worry about the training of our crew. American commanders point to the successful mission on Rouen as proof that their daylight bombing can work. And for the next couple weeks, it does. Major Tibbets and his crews fly nine bombing missions without losing a single plane. But that's all about to change. 